Hi everyone, I'm Eric. I'm going to talk, elaborate further on the uh, protocol adoption digital field experiment. So here we're simulating the management of a farm's biosecurity in the face of an outbreak. Um, each round starts with a single uh, infected premise, and then this facility can contaminate any other facility based on a probability of infection, which scales with uh, the amount of biosecurity at each site, as well as the distance from the disease. And as uh, Scott talked about earlier, we have different game treatments, which vary the amount of information provided to the player. So here's a zoomed in version of our dashboard. You see this triangle here represents the player's own facility. Every round, the, the player starts with no biosecurity. That's what this N represents. And they can see a single infection placed on the board. They also get to see uh, some varying levels of information regarding their neighboring uh, premises biosecurity. So for instance, this M uh, stands for a medium biosecurity, H for high, and then sometimes there's some even low biosecurities. Now every round the player can decide if they want to take no action or if they want to spend some of their simulated dollars to increase their biosecurity and reduce their probability of infection. The trade-off here is um, the money they spend will end up lowering, potentially lowering their in-game score. So they want to uh, utilize their resources to maximize their end-game payout and try not to be infected. So we ran this experiment using Amazon Mechanical Turk. This is an online crowdsourcing tool that allows us to recruit workers and pay them based upon their, their results. So what we did was we paid everybody, we gave everybody a base pay, and then uh, came up with a bonus based upon their end game score. This monetary incentive is made to uh, try to bolster the realism of everyone's gameplay. So using this crowdsourcing tool, we recruited 1,000 people uh, to play our game uh, quite rapidly, which is nice. Uh, we were able to get this, this finished within a weekend. So the goal of this was to understand how uh, these risk aversion strategies are differing between our sample participants. Uh, so risk aversion are these strategies that are implementing more biosecurity earlier within each simulated year, and uh, usually regardless of whether there's a low or higher contagion rate. And then on the other side of the spectrum are the risk seekers, who allocate much less biosecurity because they want to gamble for that high payout. So we calculated each of these risk scores using uh, the amount of neighboring biosecurity on the board as well as how contagious the, uh, the disease is. So here we uh, quantify the different decisions made by each of our participants. Every circle represents a different person's gameplay. Um, on the x-axis, we have their decisions based on a low contagion rate. The y-axis represents higher contagion. What we found are these lower scores are representative of people who implement very little biosecurity. They are risk seekers. For instance, zero, zero is a point where no biosecurity was implemented throughout the entire game. Uh, on the opposite end of that spectrum are the risk-averse players, this green cluster. These people implement the most biosecurity earliest in the year. They're very cautious and don't want to be infected. Um, another interesting group to talk about are these players, the yellow cluster up here. They are our opportunists. They respond to information regarding disease. So when there's a very low contagion rate, they don't implement very much biosecurity. But when the contagion rate is perceived as high, they implement almost as much as the risk averse category. And we could see these differences if we look at when they implement biosecurity throughout the simulated year. Um, the x-axis here is the month of adoption. Each round consisted of six um, treatment months, so six months in which they can make a decision. Red, the red bars mean they do, chose uh, not to implement biosecurity, and then um, orange represents moving up the chain to low, then yellow is medium, and green high. What we found were, uh, what's interesting is the, the risk seekers over here, they tend to implement very little biosecurity in both the low and the high contagion rates, whereas the risk averse are implementing the most biosecurity they can very early in the year. And what's pretty interesting is this opportunistic category. Um, 
they act like this risk-seeking uh, participants when the contagion rate is low, but then um, when the contagion is perceived as high, they act more like this risk-averse category. So they really respond to information. Our last cluster, we're still trying to decide um, what was going on. They didn't really respond to information like these other groups. They, they look very similar between both contagion rates. So we wanted to understand how these uh, behaviors uh, might correlate to actual industry professionals. So we rented out a booth at the World Pork Expo and recruited 50 um, swine for industry professionals to play uh, a simplified version of our protocol adoption digital field experiment. And we then compared this to 50 uh, randomly sampled mechanical turf workers. What was interesting is uh, both, both groups kind of fill out this spectrum. And there's quite a diverse uh, scene behavior between both these uh, cohorts, but they're, they're actually quite similar, which makes us believe that using uh, these online marketplaces uh, could give us somewhat realistic information when compared to an industry standard. So some reflections. Um, we believe gaming simulations uh, can provide insight into these human decision support systems. Uh, we're finding quite a bit of variability in the behavior of the participants we're sampling. And we think that we can nudge human behavior towards higher biosecurity if we account for these diff different risk attitudes and how to develop the correct messages uh, for each each type of uh, behavior. 